All right, you guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. I am super excited today. I finally got over my imposter syndrome and invited Miranda Jiggins. Um, anybody in the, you know, our, our Apex Mastermind Network knows who she is because she is a powerhouse, um, the total boss experience. I'm going to call you an experience. Um, but so right now I'm super duper excited to have you on today. Thank you. I know you're crazy busy with your events and everything. Um, but thank you. Thank you. And I, if you just take a second, introduce yourself and kind of give a brief summary of, you know, who you are, what you do and the, the crazy impact you're making. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that intro. I really appreciate it. That was so nice of you. Just made my day. Um, <laughs> warm, awesome introduction. And yeah, I was so excited when you asked me to be on. So I really appreciate, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So thank you again. Um, and I'm Miranda. I own Total Boss Wealth and Wellness. We are, we've grown a lot. So <laughs> it's interesting because when someone tells me, you know, ask me about what my business is now, the answer is totally different than what it was, you know, a year ago, which is so exciting. Even um, like a couple of days ago, because you've had some really big announcements in the last Yeah, I have. So you're getting me on at a really great time because, you know, we're in like transition mode. So what I have now is totally different than what it was a week ago, like you said. So um, we have, it's like, I have this Total Boss umbrella, right? So it's like a brand, we have three different legs. So we have the event side. So we have Total Boss events. We have four a year, which is super exciting. And um, I have a business coaching side and then kind of a wellness lifestyle side. So um, it's a Total Boss brand under all three legs and subcategories. And it's just fantastic. Um, so I have that. And then um, I'm a best-selling author. I have a cookbook. That's super exciting. Yay! You have all oh, it's right there. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I gave it as a Christmas gift this year and it went over super well. So I think I'm gonna have to order another copy. So my mother-in-law oh, didn't steal mine because she was jealous that she didn't get one. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, that makes me so happy. So thank you. So I'm glad it went over well and I hope they enjoy all their recipes. Um, please send me photos if you make one or your family and friends. And um, yeah, I live in Dane, Ohio with my cat, Mr. Whiskers. He's like my pride and joy and I'm moving to Texas in January. So um, yeah, that's total box in a nutshell. So we're excited to be here. I love it. And I watching you, I, I was trying to figure it out. I wish I knew exactly you know, how long I've been following you, but watching your journey has been amazing because you, you, know, you started out with, you know, the, it was essentially fitness coaching, right. Or health and wellness in the beginning. And now you're just mm -hmm. yeah. kind of mm -hmm. transitioning and expanding and bringing people on, which is, I love seeing that. Um, and one thing that I want to definitely talk about today, um, I'd love to talk about all of it, but we only have an hour. So is your events, how, how did you take that from idea to reality? Oh my gosh. Great question. Okay. So everything in, we all know, okay. So as we progress, normally things happen in our life in a pattern, right? So <laughs> I am the queen of like everything hitting the fan and then something really great comes out of it. Like I saw this quote the other day was when life gives you lemons, you make chocolate cake. And I'm like, that is me in a nutshell. I so love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, chocolate yeah. cake for your next cookbook. Yes, exactly. Right. We'll name it the chocolate cake cookbook because that's what we're doing here. But, um, <laughs> so, but, so basically, okay. So here's how the events started. They, I, they, they started, they were born. It's crazy. Like they were born, like not even a year ago. It's like 10 months ago. I feel like they've been around for so much longer than that. So thank you for that reminder. So we're at the end of, for anyone listening to this, we're at the very, like we have two days left in 2022. So we're at the new year's time, all of that. So the beginning of this year, I did not have any having an event was not even on my goals list, right? It wasn't even on when I, when you look at my 2022 goals from the end of last year, I like events were not even on my radar, right? I mean, I never like, I mean, yeah, it would obviously be cool. Like if someone said that, but it was, I've never like woke up and was like, I'm going to make an event one day, you know? So it happened when, um, so my business coach, Stacey Rasky, she's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend her. She is in Tampa. So it all started with, my clients, the, my, my business is all online. So my clients, I used to have an in-person business, switched to all online. My clients were kind of just hinting like, oh, it'd be fun for all of us to get together, right? Because they're all online, like, you know, get together, like hang out, all that. We're all like busy, like high performers. So having that time is really important, right? Even if it's a day or two. 
So that's how the idea kind of planted in my head, but they originally started as just like something extra for my clients, right? Like that's where the Tampa started. I was like, well, let's like, you know, just like, I'll go have like a client, you know, total boss thing and wherever Tampa. So that's where that started. That's how the Tampa location was born. I, because my business is growing, I keep it very real. I, um, I had to run all my bank accounts to zero to cover my expenses in, I think it was roughly February or March. I've had to do that like four other times this year. The that's a very real for any entrepreneur listening to this, especially near the growing aspect. Your um, I would be the first about to- that is so helpful because you're always yeah. like, you talk about it on Facebook and I love that. Right, right, right. So yeah, I think it's, I'm very, I'm very authentic. Like I keep it very real with people. I chose, I post the good, bad and the ugly and everything in between. So, um, cause I know I'm not alone. Right. And I also feel like if someone else sees that and they do that, they know that you can make something great out of it. So I had to run all my bank accounts to zero. I think it was March. And um, I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, I need to make something fast because I need, had to get like 500 bucks to like cover my expenses for the next day because it was the end of the month. And I'm like, oh my God, let's launch an event. So it goes to like running my, so that's like the logical choice, right? That's what anyone would do if yeah. you need let's launch an event so i created i created tampa right i created the the, tampa went from just like a client get together to like an actual public event i created this early bird pricing right for like 100 bucks and i sold i launched it literally that day this all happened within like a 12 hour period i sold it like five tickets and i was able to cover my expenses i was like well i guess we're having an event now so that (laughs) i mean that's imperfect action though right like that's it's right. something that we hear, but, but to see it put into action and actually like work out is amazing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So that's how that started. And then the other ones kind of snowballed from there. So I, when I was employed, I used to sell cars, but one of my old coworkers has connections at the Dominican. So he saw me posting about Tampa and then he messaged me one day. He's like, Hey, he's like, I want to talk to you. So he, that's how the Dominican event started. Cause he's like, dude, I have an event in the Dominican. So he's now my business partner for that. And then, um, Cincinnati, this is how the Cincinnati happened. So I have my in-person, I, I live in the Dayton Cincinnati area, but I'm moving, but I used to have an in-person fitness business in Cincinnati. So I launched Cincinnati for my clients and people like my friends and family here that can't come to Tampa or like, you know, didn't want to or all of that. So that's how Cincinnati happens. And then, um, Dallas is more of like an expo, you know what I mean? That's going to be more of like an, they all have like their different vibes. So they all kind of snowballed off of each other, but I never woke up one day and said, I'm going to have an event today. Like that is not how that happened. And all of my life events are like that. Any big thing that I've chosen to do that has worked for me has literally happened totally on a whim. Like if I plan something out, it normally doesn't work, but if something like this happens and like this really roundabout way, it does. So, um, more of a story. For all of the listeners here, imperfect action is where it's at, definitely. And I, you know, back to your authenticity, you were very upfront and authentic about the way that things go, which not only I'm sure gets you a lot of clients because people love that, but you're also inspiring and motivating everybody around you. Because I, I guarantee you there's people on Facebook that, you know, watch you. I was going to say stalk, but that's not the right word. But, you know, we have those lurkers, right? People that watch and see everything, never like and comment, you know, any of that. But you're making a difference in those people's lives too. So not only are you helping your clients, you're inspiring other people because it is hard. I mean, I mean, I know you, you comment on all of my things. You're very active and I appreciate the inspiration and motivation. It's constant. Um, so, you know, kind of the situation that I'm in, complete life change right now, Um Mm-hmm. And I actually just had a call with Steve Gamlin uh, like an hour ago. And he was the first person, I haven't even told my husband this yet. So hopefully he's not out there listening because I'd like to have this conversation. But I had a realization this morning that this is the first year in pretty much my entire adult life that my goals and vision and dreams are mine. They've always been somehow tied to my husband's career because we, you know, we work together for, you know, all these years. Um, not that I didn't have my own like portion of those goals and, you know, sub goals and whatever, but this is the first year, which is exciting and scary and seeing people like you and Stacy and, um, you know, Caitlin Shipman, I had, I talked to her earlier this week, people like that. It, it's inspiring. It's like, Oh, I can do this. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to have the support. It's just, I have to come up with my own ideas and stuff now. So I'm like excited and scared, but seeing 
all of the, you know, role models that are being authentic about it is just incredibly helpful, you know, cause whenever you say, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I've drained all my bank accounts and started back from zero. I'm like, okay, I'm there. So thank you. I appreciate the, the authenticity and you're making a bigger difference than I think you probably even realize. Thank you for that. That means a ton to me because yeah, um, I mean, it's just, I'm kind of speechless. Thank you. That means a lot to me, you know, because sometimes we feel like, especially as entrepreneurs and as high performers, we feel like we're on our own island, you know, that's very common for us, you know, because we're like going and a lot of us work from home. So we feel like we're all alone. Right. And the more of the story is we're not, you know, we're way more like each other than we realize, you know, we're all going through the same struggles, you know, and having somebody there to motivate you and inspire you is really important. Um, and I really take a lot of value in that because I, um, up until like two years ago, I had like zero support, right? So I know what it's like to have like zero support for a long time. And I know what it's like to be really supported. You know what I mean? So I really, um, it means a lot to me that there's people that are helping that helps, you know, because I know what it's like to have like no one to look up to and somebody to say, oh, they're killing it. I can do it too. Right. So that's totally my mission with like the whole total boss thing, 100%. So um, thank you for that. Well, I love that. And so I wanted, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I talked to this um, a couple of days ago with somebody else that um, I probably will air, you know, around the same time as this. So I want to kind of touch on it again, but you're always commenting on everybody's, everybody's things. You're always one of the first people to, Hey, great job. Way to go you know, and it's always motivational and it's never just like a fire emoji. Your comments are always like thoughtful. You can tell that you actually read the post or pay attention to the picture and you, you put the, that Miranda spin on it. And I I read it in your voice. Like when you comment on my things, I literally, I read it in your upbeat voice. I'm like, like when, when Kyle was on a couple last week, I think, he was talking about your energy. He's like, your, your energy is unmatched. And I read your things, things that you post and comment in your voice. So what I kind of want you to dive into is you're not just sitting on Facebook scrolling, you know, watching cat videos. Cause you have your own cat, like personal cat video. And by the way, I love your, your pictures and, um, and, and things like that. But so the intentionality on Facebook how do you make it intentional so you don't get roped into the, you know, for me, it's not cat videos. For me, it's like the poor art and stuff like that. I'm so grateful that Amy Hesper doesn't have more reels yet. Although I right. told her a couple weeks ago she needed to because I would be watching them all the time. But the intentionality on Facebook, how do you go about that? Yeah, so that's a really great question. Um, and I feel as if a lot of people do struggle with that. Like they go on Facebook for their business or whatever to have good intentions. And then it's like, shiny object syndrome, right? Um, This is like the most real answer I can give you. Like I have the biggest fire under my ass and I have a lot of pressure on me right now. So that keeps me focused. I'm, I wish I could give more of a tangible answer. You know what I mean? But if I, yeah, yeah. So um, if somebody, I feel like if somebody is just going on and like, you know, like scrolling or, you know, they have these intentions, but it's like, you're looking at this they probably don't have enough pressure in their lives for them to like get on, do the work, like get in, get out, and then continue focusing. Because I'm at the point in my business where it's like, I'm in this like level up, this crazy insane transition level up that I didn't know was going to happen four days ago, but we're here. So (laughs) welcome 2023. (laughs) So, But it's like, but I'm at the point now where it's like, I have such, I don't want to say like, fire under my ass. I want to say that like, if I don't do like my tasks, like I feel like, you know, like something's, something's going to happen. Like I need to be like super focused and building my business every single day and getting it through this transition. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what keeps me focused. It's like, A, it's like that side. I think that's what side, that's what keeps me not from doing the videos, but on the plus side, I really just enjoy inspiring others. You know what I mean? So it's like those two, it's like, I genuinely care, you know? So and I, I, I feel like that's so cliche to say, but when someone, I read someone say something, I'm like, oh my gosh, good job. That's what motivates me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I have like the business pressure, right? That's what like, that's like the behind driving force. But on like the front end, it's like, I genuinely care of what people say. And it's not like, I would never like comment on something without reading it because that to me is just like a little bit shady. You know, I mean, like, you know, I don't want someone to all day, every day. 
<laughs> I know. Like, I know, and I know, and I, th- I, if you, if you're listening to this and just do that to my post, thank you. Thank you for like doing that. But I like, but I, I just want like the, the, it's just the next level. You know what I mean? And like everything at total boss is next level, you know? So it wouldn't be living in my core values to like, Hey, and just not who I am, like morally as a person. It's like, I generally care for people and I generally want them to grow, you know? And I know what it's like to have a really hard day and somebody comments something meaningful, right? And that can like make or break somebody's day and set them up for success for the next day. So those are the two big factors, A, for my moral morals and like what I stand for. And B, I do have business pressure. You know what I mean? So those two things are what stops kind of like the scroll, you know? But I wish I could give some answer that was like, oh, I do A, B, and C. It's like, no, it's like, it's more of like getting to the root and that's, that's what it is. Well, I think that's a great answer. And I think that's what people need to hear. People don't need the, the, we get the step-by-step, you know, do this and why and that for me. And it's funny that you brought that up because that there's like a whole chapter on my book that I was working on. And I've, it's taken me so long to do this stupid book that I literally forgot what I wrote about. It's, it's about ADHD. So it's not a surprise that I like, don't remember writing any of these chapters. I'm like, Oh, that's good. Like, I don't know who that girl was that wrote that, but good job. Right. And one of the chapters was about, um, the selfishness of helping other people and motivating other people to some, to, to probably for me, at least a pretty big extent, me, you know, doing things for other people and motivating. And it's for me just as much as them, because it may, that's what I'm like you, that's what gives me like a sense of accomplishment and inspires me is other people. I I mean, my love language is appreciation and gratitude all day. Like I need that. I crave it. If I don't get it, you're probably dead to me. Like if I do something little for you, I'm like, where's my thank you? It doesn't have to be a huge, right. one, but um, you know, hold the door for somebody. Ooh, drives me crazy. If I hold the door for somebody and they don't say thank you, or, you know, I um, right. let somebody in in traffic and I don't get the wave. I'm from the South originally. I'm in Michigan now. And I'm from the South. Give me that wave people. <laughs> I will memorize your license plate. You will never get in front of me again. I'm like, I've watched you, but right. you know, so that is a, a roundabout way of saying the, you know, you, posting things like that and, you know, admitting that you get satisfaction out of it too, because I I think there's a lot of people, um, that do it because they feel like they have to. And there's actually somebody in apex that recently, I love his authenticity. He posted and said, Hey, so I know I've been silent for a little while. Here's what I realized I was doing. I was commenting on everybody's, but it wasn't genuine. It wasn't authentic. And you're shaking your head. So I think you saw the same post. Right. Yeah. Intentional about that. So I'm like, when I see him comment on things, actually read it because I'm like, okay, this must be good because he took the time to, you know, comment on that now that he's being more intentional. Um, so I just, I, we hear a lot now, so use social media for business. And I think I still have a hard time with the intentionality because I get super, I don't have any like politics or news or anything like that on social media anymore. I, you know, as soon as I joined Apex, I figured out how to, you know, manipulate the algorithm and get rid of all that. But I think it's a lot easier to get distracted than we realize. So I want people to understand that be intentional if you're getting on social media. If you need to have half an hour a day that you just scroll and watch, you know, poor art and, you know, cake decorating videos, then do it. But right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I definitely want to piggyback on that for sure. Because sometimes, because like we cannot go just go, 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 let's go with work all day long. Like that is 100%. You can't do that. We need the disconnect time, you know? And if your disconnect time and your veg out time is scrolling, do it. You know what I mean? And that's where, that's the thing where I feel like people really get kind of like hung up with this is because they're not scheduling disconnect time for them. Therefore they're just like mindlessly scrolling because they need that disconnect time, but they're not giving themselves the permission to do it. Therefore it's actually hindering them more than they realize because they're doing it like subconsciously. Right. But if you, if you know that your disconnect time is scrolling through cat videos, do it, just schedule the time, schedule 30 minutes, be like from 12 to 1230. I'm going to do nothing but scroll through cat videos. Cause this is my way of numbing out. Then I'm going to be back to work at one. Right. When you recognize your ways of numbing out and you actually do them, that's where the magic is because I went four and a half years without taking a day off from work. I'm an extreme workaholic that I was really, really worked on that. And I've, I'm a totally different person on the other side. So I know I'm the queen of like, you got to work every single day. So if I can get through that and come out on the other side and elevate this is the reason why I'm elevating is because I recognized 
that I can't go every single day, you know, it took a lot of work to get through that. And a lot of that, you know, like work, 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 and not give yourself that permission to veg out, you know, that mental disconnect time that can come from a lot of like deep childhood beliefs, right? So it's not just like saying, I'm going to stop, like, it doesn't work that way. You have to really get deep as to why you're doing this, you know, and then work through that. And then everything kind of like, it's like a domino effect magically. It all just kind of like Built, built, flows out from there, you know? So, but um, I would totally recommend to anybody, if you know your way of numbing out is to scroll through cat videos, that's fantastic. You just have to recognize it, do it and schedule the time for it. Like my way of numbing out, I don't watch TV at all during the day. I haven't in years. However, I love baking shows. Like anything on the food network is like my favorite. So that's what I do at night for like 45 minutes before I go to bed. I do my PM routine and I do my reading and I put on like sugar rush or something. And that's, that's, it's so unrelated to my world. It's like, that's what puts me to sleep, you know, but I know that and I don't have any guilt around that. And it's only for like 45 minutes at the end of the day only, you know, so that's just, that's once I realized that and started working that way it changed my life personally and professionally. My business grew because of that. And it was, and it makes you a lot more intentional on social media. Cause you know, like this is my work time. I can have my like cat video time. It's going to be here. Right. So once you can start compartmentalizing that in your brain, it's like, it works wonders. It sounds crazy and very simple, but it's, it's, that's been the magic sauce for me. Sometimes the, the, like the magic is in the simplicity though. Right. We try, we tend to overcomplicate things. I am the world's worst over overcomplicator. I will think about things for, you know, a year. And then when I finally do it and I'm like, that literally took like 10 minutes. Why has it been on my to-do list for a year? So the simple things like that, implementing those can, can have a huge impact. So I think, you know, I think it's great that, you know, you're, it's simple here. Don't overthink it. Don't try and do this, that, and the other. So I I have a, kind of an idea in mind for me that I, I want to, you know, pick your brain about a little bit. I know we love that phrase in Apex, pick your brain. Um, I, say, I don't care. It's, that, that's what you it. said, like, picking... right? Like, All right. Well, yeah. my first, like, I don't know, my first, like, five podcasts, at least two of the people made a comment that the main reason to start a podcast or one of the main reasons is because you can get free coaching advice. And I'm like, oh, I love it. But so your events, how are you structuring those? You said they're all a little bit different, which I think is really cool. Are you right? You know, are they all you? Do you have speakers coming in? Are you doing panels? How does that look? Yeah, that's a really great question. Okay. So, um, I love that you asked that because I actually was looking at this last night. So the way they're structured for 2023 is going to be the same for 2024, 2024, just going to be a touch more organized, um, in regards to like what the subjects are. Like, I'm going to have a couple in 2024 that are going to be like, this is for this topic, right? Like this event's business only, you know, and this event's like personal growth only. Cause right now they're all kind of mixed. It's like a mix of like business career. You know, I don't want to say just business. Cause like, you don't have to be a business owner, obviously, but career, right. And like personal and professional. Um, so they all have the same like total boss theme. They all just kind of have a different vibe. So that's first and foremost, how I'm doing it. So like Tampa is going to be like nine to 12 30 is going to be speakers. So I have speakers for all of them. And then there's going to be a VIP lunch and then two to four is like fun pool time. So that's like the definition of like, we're going to do work, but hang out because we need this as well too. Yeah. Right. Dallas is more like business related. It's an expo. So it's going to be more business related. And Cincinnati is a little bit more like personal growth related, but they also have the other aspects mixed in with them. So when um, you say expo, what do you, what is that? What is that? Actually? There's both. There people are going to, there's like businesses. Yeah. So that's I've exciting. never. It is. It's, I know. Right. So that's exciting. So it's going to be like people like I like sponsor booths where like businesses can come up and set up about their company, you know, or for always well, Amy, for example, if she wanted to come set up her art, you know, she could do that. And then if there, there, there's going to be like a speaker section as well, but, um, but for I have speakers for all of my events. So I really try to take myself out of it and just do the total boss brand and have the stage for other people to share their, share their experiences. I mean, these events have created so much more than what I could ever realize. And they've given me so much fulfillment. I mean, I am able to give people that have wanted to speak on stage forever that opportunity, you know, and that to me is so fulfilling to be able to provide somebody with an opportunity they've been wanting to do for so long. And now I can give that to them, you know, so that gives me so much fulfillment. So I have speakers. And then at the end of the, and each speaker normally speaks for around like 20 minutes, roughly depending on how the days go. And then I have a 10 minute activity at the end. 
So, um, so whatever activity they want to bring. So they're going to do like 10, 20 minutes of talking roughly than like a 10 minute activity. Like, um, so Stacy did like an in-person control worksheet when she was there, you know, so it's just stuff like that. Um, but it's all really relevant and like totally related to the audience. And then I have a panel at the end. So at the end, all the speakers come up and we do like a Q and A for the last 15 minutes. I love that. So I've been kind of trying to figure out I get to completely reinvent my whole direction, which is really cool. Again, like I said, it's exciting and scary at the same time. And I asked um, Philip, who is my public, I'm in his public speaking coaching group. And I, you know, I asked him there, I'm like, okay, so I've been, people have been telling me that my, you know, my interview style and my podcasting that they really like it. And I need to expand on that somehow. I don't know how. And he suggested like hosting, you know, a panel type event. And so that's why I was kind of trying to figure out what, you know, what I wanted. I don't know. I, I think I need to just commit kind of like you did. I need to just like stop overthinking it and just do something yes. and learn from it. For sure. I highly recommend that definitely. And I will say when I first started the events, I mean, they have changed from when I first, I mean, they started as like the M event, right. And they're not the M event anymore. It's like the, that only lasted for like two months, but it's a total boss. But even if you just commit to something it'll grow exactly where you are going. And you really just have to trust that, you know, if you commit to doing this panel, even if you do like a virtual or an in-person panel, just do it, you know, just, just do it. Say, I'm going to do it. Maybe you don't even have to, I don't even, secret, I don't do any back end stuff when I post an offer. Like if you ever post me something about my coaching group or whatever, online, like course, event ticket. I mean, I don't, I don't make like the perfect funnel or the perfect sign up sheet. I just do it. And if somebody signs up, then I make the sheet right then and there and send it to them. That is the way I operate. And I've been doing that for years. And that has saved me a it. lot of time. Okay. A lot of, whole lot of time. Right. And then it helps you mentally disconnect from the result. Like these events, when, when I first launched the tickets, I didn't have a sign up sheet. I didn't even care. You know, I'm like, Hey, who wants to come? You know what I mean? Here's what I do. And then when somebody contacts you, then you can say, okay, cool. So I send you the sign up sheet in just a second. Then it takes like 10 minutes to make it. Then you send it to them. And that's the way I roll. And that saves you so much time, so much headache. Right. And if nobody signs up, you're like totally emotionally disconnected and you can just do something else, you know? So that's, that's the way I roll totally. And I would highly know that's total visionary me coming out. And I'm a little extreme for that. I know, right. I really, I know I'm a huge visionary. So that may seem a little crazy to people. However, that's just the way I roll. And that's worked really well for me. And you're not like wasting time. Right. I mean, cause like you could post an offer online and it could get a lot of hits or you can post it and it's going to get like crickets. Right. So why wouldn't you just like make, make the post say, Hey, I'm going to do this, you know, or a really good way to do that too is like, Hey, here's a teaser sign up. You get like early bird pricing. If you sign up by like next Friday, like next weekend from like Friday to Sunday, I'm going to do early bird pricing, post it one week before. Then if you have interest, it gives you the whole week to build out like a sign up sheet. Right. And then it's ready to go. So if you do it that way, it gives you time to build that up, but you still have these people funneling in. So mm -hmm. that right there has really saved me a whole ton of time. And honestly, I think that's why I've been able to elevate so fast is, but I, there's lots of other reasons too, but it's that imperfect action, right? It's just doing it, having a plan and then kind of rolling with it as you go along. And um, if it doesn't work, then you don't have all this time invested in it that, you know, it's just like gone. So that was yeah. a little off topic, but I really no, wanted to say it at all. No, that was, that okay. was great. I'm, I'm saying you're taking notes. Okay. Um, yeah, take notes, please do. <laughs> I, no, I love that because I would have never thought looking at it from like a, a bystander, I would have never known that if you hadn't told me that because everything you post seems so, so yeah. thought out and organized and like, for all I know, you'd been planning those events for like two years and, you know, so no, I absolutely love that. I think it's, and it's really cool to kind of get inside people's heads and figure things like that out. Right. Especially after watching on social media and stuff, because I'm like, I never would have guessed that. But I think that's how I mean, I need to try things like that because I am an overthinker and I talk myself out of things all the time. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. And that way it really it, that's just kind of how I roll in general. Like I said, I just claim right, anybody listening. I am an extreme. Right. Like I when like my events assistant, you know, and anybody I have helping me on the side of these events, I need to make sure they're like detailed oriented because I'm such a visionary, like I will miss the small details. You know what I mean? That's just like, I don't care how the sign up sheet looks. For me, it could be just like, 
I don't know, like name, phone number, email. All right, sign up, you know, but I'm like, I need someone that says, no, Miranda, we need to like pay attention to this because people actually care, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like, I, when I'm, I'm very conscious of that. So when I'm high, when I bring people into my ecosystem, I'm like, I need to make sure you're organized and attention to detail. Cause I can go a little off the wall. Right. So, which is, which is great. And I think it's really important to know that learn how you operate and how you operate is totally fine. Like the way I operate is different than somebody else, but it's like really learning how you work. So you can use that to your advantage. And then the people that you choose to have around you can kind of play to where you're like lacking. You know what I mean? So that's really been a really big factor for me as well too. Like if I hire an assistant or something, it's like, I know they need to be really detail oriented, you know? And like they, if I like decide to do this, I need to know that they can kind of come in and like fill in the holes. Right. Um, but if you are wanting to like try and offer or like do that event, I would highly recommend that. I mean, like I said, again, I can be a little off the wall, but I, that's what I would do. I would say, Hey, I'm going to have this like virtual panel, you know, I'm going to do it in one month on this day, early bird pricing today's Friday, early bird pricing goes on sale in one week. Like early bird pricing is three days only after that, the cost is going to go up 50 bucks. If you want in, make sure you do the early bird pricing. And then that would give you a full week to market that. And then if people start signing up, then it gives you a week to build up a sign up sheet. Right. So you can like be working on the back end things while you have front end stuff coming in. So it's like all paid time. That right there is where I feel like people should lean into more because so many people get stuck in prep purgatory. Right. So many people get stuck in prep. Yeah, exactly. And um, I know I'm the opposite extreme of that. But however, it's like making like the perfect sign up sheet and like the perfect funnel and like the perfect this, it's like, you don't really need that. You know, I mean, you will eventually, but just like for, for, for someone in our shoes, like just starting out, you know what I mean? Or just like in this shift, it's like, we don't, and perfection doesn't need to be a thing. It's like, as long as people know that you care about them and you like have this amazing aura about yourself, which you do, I mean, people hang out with people they know, like, and trust, right? It's like that no like, and trust factor. I mean, like people so don't care like about that on like every episode. I love that you brought that up. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And it's true. You know, people just want to know that you care about them, you know, that at the end of the day. Right. So, um, but yeah, I would totally recommend trying that. Be like, Hey, like I'm going to do a panel on this day, right? Online. These think about how the speakers you want to be there, make the post say, okay, here's the deal. In one week, these tickets are going to go on sale early bird pricing that entire week. I would push it for that whole entire week. Like one post a day, like this person's talking like Tuesday, like then the Wednesday, like this person's going to talk. And then, um, I would do like three days of early bird pricing and then bump the tickets like 50 bucks after that. Um, and then if you have engagement, then you can build up that sign up sheet and that back end stuff. If you don't, then just do something else. Yeah. Well, and you have and no we have nothing to lose to try that. Right. Like even people who, who see you've got my wheels turning right now about multiple things, but what do we lose five minutes or 10 minutes of, you know, a Facebook post. Right. And you have everything to gain. So I, exactly. I love that you're authentic about things like that too because most people wouldn't want to admit that they wouldn't want to admit like I had no idea I just posted it to see what you know to see what happened and it worked out so yay now I have you know four events a year <laughs> and <clears throat> so it, it's inspirational because in my head I'm already starting to overthink it because I'm like well you know I got to figure out like what to pay virtual speakers and yada 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 blah 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 no just do it I know enough people yeah. that I can figure it out for sure. Right. And it's just, it's just getting started because when you start them, they're, they're prop. I always say, keep the end goal the same, but be super flexible on the road to get there. Like that is what I live by, but only because I used to get really locked into like the process, not necessarily like, like the launching things process, but if I had a goal, I would like loosely map it out. Right. And that map was like, and this is also what I was taught growing up, you know, and before I hired Stacy, like my previous mentors, like very linear, right? You know what I mean? And my mind naturally isn't linear, but when we're, even if we have a long, non-linear mind and we grew up with very linear people around us, you're naturally going to like think like that, right? But I really learned that if you keep your end goal the same, but if you're super flexible on the route to get there, it makes it so much more effortless. It's way more aligned for you. And it really helps you be flexible. Like 
when I first launched the events, they're, they're, they're a little bit different now than when I first started, but the, the, the thing's the same, right? Like I changed the name, you know what I mean? Like, and no one cared, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I had actually forgotten because it's been total boss for right last, you know, n- until you said M event. I'm like, oh yeah, she did. It was M event at first. Right. Yeah. So when it things like that, and that's where I see a lot of people, um, kind of get hung up on like the perfect name and all of that. And it's like, if you name your something, whatever, you know, and it changes, that's fine. My business has been through four name changes before total boss was here. Like it was like Miranda Jiggins LLC. Then it was like, I was like goals fitness for a while. Then total boss was born. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is it. You know? So I have, I've trademarked total boss wealth and wellness and all of that. And I would also be really, um, to the audience listening, if you know, you're creating a business or a program or something, you're not sure what to name it. Just like start with something really generic and not be so like locked into the name. And then it'll, it'll roll as you go along. Um, like I'm super grateful. I didn't trademark any of my previous names until total boss was born. Like once total boss wealth and wellness was here, I was like, I just knew I'm like, this is it. And it covers all of like the legs of my business. Right. And now it's a brand. Right. And it feels so aligned. Um, so I would, I would just really stress that to people because I feel like people think they need to have like the perfect name and all of this other stuff. And it's like, no, it's like, and if you change your name, like no one's going to remember in a couple months, like you just said, you know, yeah. like it started with but now it's total boss and no one got mad. No one left because I changed the name, you know, <laughs> like no one had a meltdown and like people don't even remember now. So it's, it's, it's all good. Well, and you're right about that. You have a brand now. Cause when I, when I hear your name, like total boss, when I hear total boss, it's Miranda. It's like, I, it, it is an, a brand and it, it's really cool that you talked about like that it clicked. Okay. This is the one now it's time to trademark it. Yeah. But instead of seeking perfection, do that, you know, get that imperfect action out there and then the pieces will fall together and it'll happen the way it's supposed to. I love right. it. Yeah, for sure. And it is the imperfect action, you know, cause like, when I, because like my business, like I said, it's, it's been here since 2018. So it's had a couple names, but like, I'm really happy. I totally believe in trademarking for sure. However, I will say I'm really grateful. I didn't trademark any of my previous names and I waited until the time was right. So, um, I really want to stress that to the audience as well. Like I was able to build my business from like basically zero to $50,000 a year with zero, like super big expenses. Right. And then, um, so I didn't like trademark my name right out of the bat. You know, I mean, you hear a lot of gurus say that, however, this is like real life, you know what I mean? And like stuff's expensive. I didn't really start like investing into myself and my business until I had to like move from like the 50 to like the six figure mark. But I will say that like, just it's the imperfect action. It's just doing it, you know, and just rolling with it, you know? And, um, if so, if you think of a name and you know, it's not 100% right, but it's good enough for now, that's great the right one will come. You know what I mean? It's just roll with it for now. And when the time comes, you'll change it and it'll be super aligned, you know? And then if you want to trademark that as your personal brand, that's totally fine. But, um, but I just really recommend and just really encourage just to, you know, if it doesn't seem totally right, like if you know it's the right path, but it's not like the one, that's okay. Like it'll come, it'll come with time. Yeah, that's in there again, you got my wheels turning. Um, I'm going to have to like re-listen to this and write down all the thoughts that it, that it like flew over my head as we're talking. Um, so, you know, we've talked about the events, we've talked about, um, you know, the imperfect action. Talk to me about your cookbook. Cause one of the cool things that you did about the cookbook is you had real people make the recipes and give you feedback and pictures and things like that. And I know, I mean, not just my internet friends, but at least one of my like real world, I see her all the time friends was part of that and thought, and, you know, I've heard her feedback and, and talk about the process. So how did that work from, you know, idea to conception? Oh my gosh. That's another imperfect action thing. Like I seriously feel like it sounds like crazy when I say it out loud, but okay. So for the cookbook, right. So, um, we're part of Apex, you know, for people listening that don't know, it's like a business owner mastermind and a part of Apex we have, I highly recommend Apex. If you haven't joined, please do. Um, talk about it on almost every episode. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Especially right now. They got a real good yes, yes. Right, exactly. So in Apex, there's something called building your machine. And a part of building your machine is writing a book. That's towards the end. Um, And at the beginning of this year, like I knew it was there, but I never knew I would like to write a book about my life. I don't feel like now's the right time for that. You know what I mean? I just like, I just don't, you know? Um, However, 
writing a book was in there. And I never really knew. I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm not sure what I'd write a book about, you know, but whatever. So I, for my, um, the wellness side of my business, my clients get weekly nutrition tips, right? They get weekly nutrition tips. So they're like three quick nutrition tips, like for the week, you know, today I did like a healthier stuffed shell situation for the holidays. They're like super great. Um, and a couple months ago, no, no, no. I, I decided to do this book in July. So I think this was in like May or June of this year. One of my clients, she's like, we need a little like cookbook or like a PDF or something to keep all these nutrition tips in because I put them in their group chat weekly. I put them in the group chat. I pin them to the top so they can go to the top and like go through them. But there's no like just PDF of like nutrition tips, right? Cause I make them on the spot. Um, so I was like, she said, she made that comment and I was like, okay, yeah. I'm like, that's, you know, I'm like, I like that idea. And then, um, I was supposed to go to an the apex live in July I had the whole day like blocked off to go to live and um, my flight got canceled like first thing in the morning. And I was so upset that my flight got canceled because I was so excited to go to live and just, I wanted to get out for the day. You know, I was so upset that my flight got canceled and I was only going for the day. So like the likelihood of me like rebooking another direct flight to be get there. I mean, there's just, it just would have been like a disaster. Mm-hmm. So um, I was like, okay. I was like, now I'm like, we have the, after I had my crying moment, <laughs> I had a moment after I had all that, that was done. Um, I was like, right. Got out of my system. Right. I was like, okay. I'm like, when I have this whole day, I'm like, what I'm going to do. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, it just clicked in my head. I'm like, I'll write a cookbook. So who does that though? I love it. (laughs) That is like (laughs) the the definition of when life gives you lemons, make chocolate cake. Like literally, I think. Seriously. Yeah. So I like, and I'm like, well, this makes sense. I'm like, because I have all these recipes already, you know, I had all the recipes right then and there. So, um, and I don't have like a budget to spend like $10,000 on a book. Right. I mean, I don't think a lot of people do. So I totally did the book on Canva with the help of my coach, Stacey Rath. She kind of like guided me through, I did it on Canva. Um, and so basically all I had to do was like pull the pictures together, like pull the recipes together. And then it just like clicked in my mind. I'm just like, well, I'm like, we need, I'm like, I need pictures of these recipes. Cause there's, it's a cookbook and people like the pictures. So I'm like, and they just like click. I'm like, why don't I ask Facebook if some, if people are willing to make a recipe at home and just send me a cute picture of it. And the response was insane. I got like 90 comments on that post for people willing to help with this recipe book. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, I was, I was shocked, you know, and I wasn't hoping for all of the recipes. I'm like, even if there's like 50 recipes in the book, I think. I'm like, even if half of them have pictures, that's fine. So we can do like clip art or for the other ones, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was like overwhelming people that I didn't even know, you know, or that I've seen like once online, like haven't really seen before. They're like, I'll do one. I'll do one. So I was like, okay. So I just, I made a spreadsheet of like all their names. And I just assigned them a recipe, right? I'm like, here's your recipe. And they all sent it back and all the recipes were so great. And it was just so cool to see the community come together. And, um, and then I was like, well, I definitely want to shout them out. So I put everyone who did a recipe, their name is in like recipe credit to on the page. Um, so it really made like a community effort. So that's how that happened. Um, yeah. And I did that book for like $500. So total. So I didn't, I, the only people I had to hire for that, I hired a designer to help with like, like the quotes pages, I needed help with that because the book has to be a hundred pages for it to be print on Amazon in the format that it's in. So it was like 58. So we had to make it a hundred pages for it to print. Like, no, no. If, if it's under a hundred pages on Amazon, like the spine, it won't have the standard spine. Okay. Does that make sense? So it won't print like, it'll print like a book, but it'll be like a more of a brochure. And we wanted the book. So we had to make it a hundred pages. So we did the quote. So I hired a designer to help make it a hundred pages. And I, I found this girl, she was awesome on um, Upwork that she did, she did the editing for it. Um, yeah. So I did the whole book for like $500 and all because you missed a flight. All because I missed a flight. Right. And it it was numb. It was, I got seven out of 10 bestseller on Amazon. So we got, thanks. Yeah. So that's just like, and it's all because I missed a flight. Right. And that's like the definition of in-person action. I'm like, well, I'm going to write this book. I'm because I had all the stuff. It was just like putting it together. And that's also like recycling content, you know, and yeah. people, and I, people like my mentors and stuff have always talked about this, but I not, no, has never really clicked until this year for, um, like, you know, once you have enough content, you can recycle it. And that never really clicked until this year. I'm like, oh yeah, you know? So, um, yeah. So 
that's, I wish I had a more detailed answer on like how I scientifically like did this book, but I don't. No, I love it. I think that's great. I, I, there again, this is important stuff for people to hear. I think that it is, I love, I have that exact same one, except I don't use it. I need to, uh, the, for everybody that's, well, everybody other than the two of us that can't see, she just drank out of the big gallon water jug and I have one and it takes so long to fill that I get so bored standing there and I'm like, oh my goodness. So I literally consider going and buying like the 89 cent jugs of water and just dumping it in there just because <laughs> it takes so long to fill. <sighs> Well, so we're getting, we're getting close to our, our, you know, stop time, our hour mark, but what, you know, what is one thing that you want to, you know, everybody to, I guess the, the big takeaway that you want people to have from this? Yes. The big takeaway, oh my gosh, these questions always like amazing, but kind of hard at the same time, because there's so many. I would just really suggest everyone to fully embrace who they are, fully live authentically and just fully embrace you because you, no one is like you, you know, you are your own amazing, awesome individual person. And I say that because for a really long time, I was living through other things. You know what I mean? Like I was really, no one ever believes me when I say this, but it's true. Like I was really bullied when I was in high school. I didn't go to prom. I didn't eat lunch in the school cafeteria, junior and senior year. I was like total quiet, shy girl outcast. And now I, who I am today. And it's because I figured out who I was and I just like embrace me, you know, and ever since I started doing that, that's where the magic happens, you know, and people are going to love you exactly for who you are. And if somebody doesn't, that will totally make space for somebody so amazing and so aligned to come in and replace them. Um, and I say that as well, because I used to have this huge fear of people like leaving my life, you know? Um, and that's because of like, a lot of stuff that like, you know, happened growing up, you know what I mean? And I have like abandonment issues and all of that. And I think a lot of people do have that. However, I really had to work. I, I don't want to say like get over because like, you don't get over anything. It's like you work through it. Right. I really had to work through that. If like, I am who Miranda is supposed to be. And if that's not for somebody, that's okay. You know, if they choose to leave, which I have totally had that happen, you know, my biggest fear is like came to life. Right. But it creates this amazing space for somebody brand new to come in that's going to be so aligned with you and so supportive of you and you're going to grow together and it's going to be awesome. So I want everybody to say like, you hear me say all these things, but it's truly because I just embrace who I am, you know? And I mean, and we are not for everybody and that's okay. You know what I mean? So um, that's my biggest piece of advice to people. Just love you, you know, embrace you. It takes time, right? If you like have struggle with embracing who you fully are, any of that, it's not going to happen overnight. It took me a full year to really bring out the true Miranda. But if you just keep working on it, little baby steps every single day, that's where the magic happens. So that's my advice to everybody. And the cool thing about you saying that is what I, excuse me, what I, and I guarantee you, everybody that follows you love most about you is your authenticity. You don't hide it. You are who you are this is who I am, embrace it. And I think that's really important for people to, um, that's something that I'm learning slowly, but surely is to embrace that. And just, cause I'm, I was one of those people that I'm, I'm loud. I get, you know, told to, to tone it down a little bit. Um, and I've kind of stopped doing that so much and things are starting to fall into place. Right. So I love that advice. Um, guys, make sure you check Miranda out, follow her on Facebook. And I will post all your, I know you put your links in the Calendly and I'll post all your links in there. Actually, I think you were awesome. And you only put one with like a, was it like a link tree or a phone sites or something? Oh yeah. I think I put my Facebook on there. Yeah. Facebook's the best way. Yeah. I think it's put with a one on there. Love yeah. It. Yeah. So, whatever. Thank you so much. I know you were super busy. So you taken an hour out of your day. It means the absolute world. You could have like written a whole book in this hour. So I'm very <laughs> grateful. <laughs> Or at least a chapter, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. And thank you for having me. I was, I was so honored and so excited to be on your podcast. So it just totally made my day. So um, I'm so just pumped up right now. So thank you for having me. And I love, I love what you're doing. And I'm so proud of you. And your 2023 is going to be like rocket shipping upwards. So I'm just so excited to watch you grow. Well, thank you. And I appreciate you. And we'll have to do this again. Cause I feel like we have so many different layers we could have gone down and um, pulled back and, and given value. So thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you and I will see you next week. Thank you, Miranda.
Move forward, I'll see you later. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.